You said yeah. there are four, the four most dangerous words in theater are? I have an idea. Quote Orson Welles, though. Okay. Uh, Why are those the four most dangerous <laughs> words in theater? <laughs> because as soon as you say that, you've got to change everything. And everybody goes into major changes, whether it's the design or the, the actors or the blocking okay. or the play. It's, um, it's an idea that comes often from the side. Sometimes it's brilliant. Sometimes it's absolutely apropos. Um, and sometimes it just sort of sits on top of the play or the production. Right. So I'm trying to meld those two together and synthesize that. It's kind of what I try and do when I'm a director, really. I try and uh, not not I, I try and actually synthesize everything so that everything is one, which is really the story. And so that's one of the kind of <coughs> a, a hidden goal, a secret goal, a public goal. I don't know that I you don't see my direction. I never I used to, I used to be like that, you know, seeing my direction. I was <coughs> trying to get that right. I mean, you try to disappear as a director. I'd like the, everything to disappear, just the story to be front forward. Um, so how do you achieve that with an actor who wants to put their performance in front of the story? How do you do that? It's really the simplest way and the most effective way is to be able to identify um, the, the action of the story, which is what is happening in time and space, and ask the actor uh, with their objective of, for the whole play to play that aspect of causing that action to come about against another actor who's playing another kind of intention that causes the action to come about. And my job is to focus on the action in time and space. So it's moving forward through time. It's moving in a space. Uh, the story of time and space is changing over the course of the s story of the play. Uh, but the, uh, And the action is moving forward in some kind of progressive mode. Uh, and the actors make their contribution, usually in conflict, better, I think, in conflict, to create that action. And the audience sees the space between the actors. You make them see the space between the actors and you're achieving something, which is to see the story. Now, that sounds Gouldian to me, the space between the notes, right? Yeah. So Gould says the music isn't actually the notes. It's the space around the notes and the s architectures that are created by that space. So you're saying this about theater as well. I may have even learned it from doing Glenn, which we did together. Um, I may have even learned that thought from that, really. Um, it is Goulding. It is not mm, hearing the music, but hearing the space between the notes. In order to do that, you have to play the music, which is kind of almost an emotional life that's a bit inexpressible. I mean, you know, and we all know that it's hard really sometimes to define what action is, right? And you're trying to express what the action is, and it's a bit like grabbing at the air, and you're trying to say the action is just this, and someone doesn't understand you in a rehearsal process, and doesn't what does that mean, action? And I think many of our um, w young artists, including myself in my time, uh, had a real hard time understanding what the a what is action in the theater. What is what is it? Right? It's very hard to identify, really, and name it because it's actually almost inexpressible, almost unnameable. It is an event, uh, but it's I elusive because its meaning keeps changing. If you're actually just playing a verb, you can't define what the verb is. You start to put qualifications on it, and the verb should keep changing according to the person putting the input in. The other person they're putting the input, um, uh, a, a, the conflict, right? The, the conflict is a verb. I mean. To do it in a simplistic sense, I understand in a murder mystery what the action is to find out the killer. So that action, you, you mean that action on that level? In a, in a way, to find out the killer. Uh, but, but you're talking about more the action complex, underneath. The more complex the play is to, uh, to uh, express love for your father that you're killing, right? There's a killer there expressing love, right? So he's, one person's trying to find out the, uh, who the killer is. There's got to be a number of people trying to hide who the killer is for whatever the reason is. So on a kind of superficial level, yes, to find out the killer, but it's, uh, it's a play as much about family relations. So uh, who is the killer of Oedipus? Who, who is causing the plague? Right? On one level, it's, it's a detective story. Who's causing the plague? And the, on the other level is the arrogance that we bring uh, in our 
lives, but how we think we know when we actually don't know ourselves. So it is still an investigation, but the investigation is, becomes a much more internal investigation. So within the murder mystery, the top action is who did it? I have to find out the murderer, but really the actions underneath are I have to live with my father, or I have to learn about the truth about my father and my family. How does that become an action? Well, it is and it's still like the murder mystery, and I think one reflects the other, one is a mirror to the other. It's still an investigation, only the investigation is internal, not external. It appears to be external, it appears to be knowing, and the journey is really from a, a king who learns how to go from he knows everything to not knowing, and the discovery of not knowing. In, in Oedipus' instance, I think, for example, it's really about a guy who falls. Yes, it's a murder mystery, who's, cause, who's causing the plague, but he falls, and he's in the act of falling. And so he falls from knowledge, or knowingness, uh, to a place where he can't know wh who he is. And these secret desires, or subliminal desires, uh, are discovered by him. So the, I would say the action is falling, even though it appears to be a murder mystery in a sense. It is very much in a way Oedipus, it's, well, it's a, it's, a mystery, it's, a, it's a detective story. I think UNESCO would say it was a detective story about finding out who caused the plague. At just the, the superficial level, I do think that the action and the, the event are very close or need to reflect each other. They're not very far away. The um, action and the event. The event being, this is the event, this is the event of a plague, uh, discovery after discovery, and someone's being a detective, to, but he's in conflict with other people who know and don't know uh, in that instance. But the underneathness of that is, um, I suppose the action is falling. As the more he knows, the more he falls. The more he falls into a state of unknowingness.